Here is the definition of a Cauchy sequence. I'll leave a link in the description to my lessons on Cauchy sequences. One of the best ways to get comfortable with these weird definitions in real analysis is to prove that a sequence fits the definition. The best place to start is with a simple example, and that's what we've got today. We're going to prove that the sequence of reciprocals of natural numbers, 1 over n, is a Cauchy sequence. Remember, the idea of a Cauchy sequence is that the terms of the sequence get arbitrarily close together as you go further and further along in the sequence. And certainly, this definition has some similarity to your standard definition of the limit of a sequence, and we can set up a proof that a sequence is Cauchy in a similar way. We can begin with our Cauchy sequence proof framework and then fill it in. We need to take an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, then we'll need to find a sufficiently large value of big N that works, and by works, we mean that for all m and n greater than that big n value, we have that the distance between the nth term and the nth term of our sequence is less than epsilon. So the idea to figure out this proof is that we'll start here with the expression representing the distance between the nth and nth terms of our sequence, We'll work with them a little bit and eventually try to figure out what big N will need to be so that we guarantee this inequality. And before we begin working with this, just for some intuition, why would we think that the terms of this sequence get arbitrarily close together in the first place? Well, the sequence converges to zero. I'll leave a link to my proof of that in the description. So we could go far enough in this sequence to get as close to zero as we want. However, every term of the sequence is positive. So if we zoom in really close on a number line, and maybe zero is right here, if we go far enough in the sequence so that we're looking at terms that are, say, right here, well, clearly, there's barely going to be any distance between that term and all the following terms that will just be getting closer to zero. So, makes sense that this sequence would be Cauchy. Let's go ahead and prove it. Again, we start with the expression representing the distance between the nth and nth terms of our sequence. We would love to not have m and n wrapped up in the same absolute value bars. Oftentimes, we can fix that sort of problem with the triangle inequality. But the triangle inequality only applies to the absolute value of a sum, not to the absolute value of a difference. But hey, that's no problem. We'll just rewrite this subtraction as addition. It's equal to the absolute value of 1 over m plus negative 1 over n. Now that we have it as a sum, we can apply the triangle inequality. This is certainly less than or equal to the individual absolute values of the pieces. That is, the absolute value of 1 over m plus the absolute value of negative 1 over n. Again, that's by the triangle inequality. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that. Now, m and n are natural numbers, so the absolute value bars aren't going to do anything to those. These absolute value bars will turn this negative one into a positive one. So all in all, this expression is equal to one over m plus one over n. Remember, we're trying to show that this is less than epsilon. We know that this is less than or equal to this. So if we can show that this sum at the end is less than epsilon, we'll be done. Now, how could we guarantee that 1 over m plus 1 over n is less than epsilon? Well, we would just need 1 over m to be less than half epsilon and 1 over n to be less than half epsilon. If those are both true, then we're done. Let's just say we work with n. We want 1 over n to be less than epsilon over 2. And remember, m and n are both just arbitrary natural numbers greater than big N. And of course, right now, we're trying to figure out how big big N needs to be. For 1 over n to be less than epsilon over 2, how big does n need to be? Well, we'd have to solve for n, which we can do by inverting both sides of this inequality. 
Inverting both sides of this inequality gives us n and 2 over epsilon, and when you invert both sides of an inequality, you have to flip the inequality so n is greater than 2 over epsilon. So if this is true, then this is true, and this is the type of condition we want because we can make n and m as big as we like. So if we take big N to be greater than 2 over epsilon, then taking M and N greater than big N will give us this condition, which will lead to what we want. I'll just shrink this bit of scratch work and move it up here to the corner so you can look at it if you want. Now let's finish filling in the details here. One other thing, 2 over epsilon might be really big. How do we know that we can find a natural number, big N, greater than 2 over epsilon? That is a result of the Archimedean principle, and I'll leave a link to my lesson talking about the Archimedean principle in the description. It guarantees us that for any real number, we can find a bigger natural number. So we can certainly choose a big N greater than 2 over epsilon, and then we're considering all M and N greater than big N. Then we got from here the distance between the mth and nth terms of our sequence to here, 1 over M plus 1 over N. Now, since big N is smaller than M and N, if we put that smaller number, big N, into those denominators, the numbers will become bigger. That's because dividing by a smaller number yields a larger quotient. So this is less than 1 over big N plus 1 over big N. But by similar logic, if we replace these numbers big N with the smaller number 2 over epsilon, that again will make the sum bigger because dividing by a smaller number gives a bigger quotient. So this is certainly less than 1 over 2 over epsilon plus 1 over 2 over epsilon. And then we'll have to go down a line here to fit it. 1 over 2 over epsilon is epsilon over 2. And then again, 1 over 2 over epsilon is epsilon over 2. So we've got epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is epsilon. And that completes the proof. We found that for any epsilon greater than zero, if we take a natural number big N greater than two over epsilon, then for all M and N greater than big N, the distance between the mth and nth terms of our sequence will be less than epsilon. So the terms of the sequence, 1 over n, are getting arbitrarily close together, and thus 1 over n is a Cauchy sequence. Goodness gracious, she's a crazy kitten. Goodness gracious, she's a crazy kitten. She's a crazy, crazy kitten.